So today, let's talk about why everybody loves Rolex. The development and use of tools might be one of the most important steps in the evolution of mankind. We use sticks and stones to protect ourselves, hunt, gather plants, build shelters, and even to create art. Without tools, humans wouldn't be where we are now. Instead of being content with a stone ax, we thought we could hunt better from a distance with bow and arrow. The two ideas became one, we were able to protect and we were able to attack. Thus, the spear was born as well. And we just kept going. We kept pushing boundaries. And of these inventions and innovations, one of the oldest has been the clock. We needed a way to measure time at intervals that are shorter than the day or the lunar month. The sundial was the first way that we did this. And then we had water clocks. Then we had hourglasses and so on. These were fantastic and incredibly useful but we became wanting of something else that was more precise. And around the year 1300, the first mechanical clocks began appearing. And then from then on, the clock was everywhere. And now we took timekeeping to another level. It has become a tool purpose built, not just for timekeeping, but a variety of functional purposes. I'm sorry, Joseph, this is a watch channel, not a history lesson. Hold on, hold on, hold on, because this is where Rolex comes in. Hi everyone, and I truly do hope that you did enjoy that little bit of an intro today. And yes, today I'm gonna to be talking about Rolex. And today I'm going to be talking quite a lot about why everybody loves Rolex. Now, before we do go any further, my name is Joseph Delwood. I'm the founder, curator, and host here at 10 Pieces of Eight. And today I'm gonna to be talking about everyone's favorite watch brand, Rolex. Now, before we do go any further, I do wanna say thank you for watching our channel. Thank you for liking it and thank you for subscribing. And if there's anything you want us to touch on, leave a comment below, that really does help. Also, follow our Instagram if you want. It's just a lot of watch pictures, but who doesn't like that? Anyways, I'm rambling. So, Rolex. Rolex were really the first ones to create some of the world's very first tool watches. Watches that didn't simply tell the time, but rather watches for very specific functional purposes. It just so happened that they doubled up as jewelry and decoration afterwards. There's a romantic notion here that Rolex isn't just about luxury for the sake of luxury, but rather it's luxury with a tool built purpose, which kind of makes it cool. So what are these purposes? Well, let's start with the oldest and the truest, and that is the Rolex Submariner. See, the purpose of this watch is very simple to go deep underwater into the darkest trenches, the brightest reefs, and the most haunting shipwrecks. This watch was purpose-built. It was made to be water resistant, and the newest version can go 300 meters deep. It's got luminescent hands, and this is extremely useful for when you do go diving. It allows you to read the time with absolute certainty. It's not just about convenience, it's about survival. It's about how much time have we spent underwater? Do we have enough oxygen? Have we ascended slowly enough to get to the bends? This is the real purpose. This is why Rolex is so loved. Of course, these days, the Rolex Submariner is not used for this purpose, but it is truly the romantic notion that this specific watch delivers this product. The Submariner specifically has been shown quite a bit of love over the years and has been one of Rolex's most popular models for decades. It was even the watch of 007 before Omega, as Sean Connery wore a Submariner in each of his first four James Bond films. It would make a comeback too, as in 1973, Roger Moore wore another Submariner in Live and Let Die. Nowadays, almost every celebrity at one point or another has been photographed wearing a Submariner. And to achieve this kind of passionate following, the details have to be right. It's the reason why Rolex is so loved. It's the water resistant oyster case. It's the fact that it's got the luminescent dial. It's the fact that it's still made out of steel and they constantly are trying to improve it. For example, on this 2021 version, we've got a quick release clasp that allows us to extend and move 
to be able to fit it on almost anyone's wrist. It's the fact that Rolex is never done. With this newest version, they made sure that it was able to go 300 meters deep and that it was able to get 70 hours of power reserve, not the 48 that its predecessor had. They even slimmed the lugs to make sure it was more comfortable to be worn. And to be honest, I haven't been able to tell the difference between this one and the previous iteration. But if they say it's more comfortable, I believe them. It's also the fact that they've replaced the bezel with ceramic instead of the previous steel. And this is how you can basically tell the difference between an older Rolex Submariner and the newer ones. And it's this constant improvement that makes a Submariner so well loved. And the same can also be said of the Rolex Daytona. The purpose of the Rolex Daytona was never really defined. It's called the Daytona, yet it has the word Cosmograph on the top of it. The Rolex Daytona lost its battle to the Amiga Speedmaster, which was the first watch on the moon. However, most people will say that the Rolex Daytona won the war. It truly became one of the most sought after watches in the world, with one of the longest wait lists. Rolex first introduced the Daytona in 1963, in hopes of competing with the Speedmaster. The name was borrowed directly from one of the most famous races in the world, the Daytona 500. And they made sure they threw it in every single time there was a winner. Kind of free marketing there. Rolex is one of the smartest marketing companies in the world, as it used to associate itself only with victors. And it used to do the same with people that climbed Everest or people that used to swim the English Channel. Even though racing and NASCAR don't have the same high society image it once did when the Daytona was first introduced, the association still pays dividends today. Now, the coolest thing about the Daytona is its most important association wasn't with the sport of racing itself, but rather the famous actor turned racer named Paul Newman. You see, with Rolex, it wasn't about precision, it was about the story. And the story goes that once Newman started racing, his wife went to Tiffany & Co and bought a Daytona with an exotic black and white dial and engraved on the back of it, drive slow. The two-tone dial became so closely associated with the Hollywood legend that collectors started referring to those models as Paul Newman Daytonas. When Paul Newman's myth-making Paul Newman Daytona went up for auction in 2017, it became the most expensive wristwatch ever sold at $17.8 million. With the original Daytona, there was never anything really groundbreaking. It used the Myota movement and it wasn't the first watch in space like the Breitling Cosmonaut. It also wasn't the first watch on the moon like the Amiga Speedmaster. But because it was so closely associated with winners, everyone wanted one. When you watch the Formula One race and you see the Rolex logo everywhere, all you think to yourself is, one, what is a Rolex? And two, what is the best Rolex and the hardest one to get? And that is the Daytona. Well, it was up until about 2012 when another Rolex started to gain prominence and started to gain the same mystique that the Daytona did. The watch that I'm talking about, of course, is the Skydweller. And the Skydweller was introduced in 2012. The Skydweller took the concept of a GMT and put its own spin on it, pun intended. It was aimed at frequent travelers rather than pilots because the Skydweller added an annual calendar movement and it allowed for people to be able to tell not only what time it is back home, but the month and day too. It was truly Rolex's most complicated watch yet. And Rolex's craftsmanship was truly on show, as the calendar automatically differentiates between 30 and 31 day months as the date changes are linked to the month as well as shown above the hour indices. In true Rolex fashion, Rolex designed its watch with purpose in mind. The Skydweller was made with members of the British Royal Air Force who served in the Battle of Britain specifically. While nowadays it isn't most popular with pilots, you will often see celebrities wearing one. Dirk Nowitzki, LeBron James, Conor McGregor, Cristiano Ronaldo, all have been spotted wearing a Rolex Skydweller, making it one of the hottest watches available on the market. But we've reached a point in our history where tools are no longer simply functional. 
we need them to look good too. Rolex are no exception here, as they have been strong advocates for watches where style meets function. Now the Skydweller isn't as focused on the function part as it is the good looking part. And it really does allow its style elements to take over its function. This 42 millimeter Skydweller is in stainless steel with a beautiful blue dial. Most people in the watch market know that Rolex's blue is unmatched. Unlike a Submariner, you don't have to worry about things like corrosion or water resistance because this watch, even though it's got the 100 meters of water resistance, is not used for diving. The outer ring is made out of white gold, which allows for the quick adjustments for the date, the local time, and the current time. So the Skydweller still has that added functionality, but it is a little bit dressier, which is different to the Daytona, even though the Daytona is in precious metal. This Daytona is featured in Rolex's 18 karat white gold, but you wouldn't know that unless someone told you. It features diamond indices where the loom plots would usually go. It provides a unique look with a dazzling effect, and it's not just a race watch, but it's a deluxe race watch on your wrist. And it's still water resistant up to 100 meters with an added Oyster Flex bracelet. Corrosion isn't a concern with this watch, or at least its bracelet, as the metal within the band is covered in this high performance elastomer. I don't know what that word means, but I know it's good. The watch manages style, comfort, and function all in one, so long as the pushes are screwed down before you jump into any water, of course. But yet again, in true Rolex fashion, everything here serves a purpose. Similar to that of the Submariner or the Skydweller, the design is robust and versatile. And could you not picture yourself in a race car with this on? So these are the tools and Rolex are the ones that have provided them. People love Rolex because of watches like this. There's prestige behind the name, there's heritage. The name Rolex doesn't just carry a high price tag, it carries the willingness to do better to try new things, to provide humanity with the tools to be better. We are a long way away from the stone tools that I was talking about in our intro. And we can clearly see here that Rolex continues to innovate and God knows what we have in the future. So tell me, have I gone into enough detail about why everybody loves Rolex? You can reach out to us in the links below. And if you think I missed anything, don't forget to drop a comment below. As always, you can like, subscribe, hit the bell, abuse me in the chat if you think I said the word Tudor wrong. As always, I've been Joe, and we hope you've enjoyed this moment in time.